five Paris police officers fighting to get their jobs back. They were chief Williams Crosshead. Why the police chief says he suspended them to begin with. A man charged in the stabbing death of a Jackson County man faces a judge. The new details we learned in court. I get a phone call that said that there was a bench warrant out for my arrest. An old scam has some new victims. What you should watch out for if someone calls claiming you missed jury duty. This is WKYT News at 530. It's been going on for hours. Today, five suspended Paris police officers have been making their case on why they should keep their job. Good afternoon to you. The police chief originally suspended six officers without pay. He says the officers spent too much time hanging out in the dispatch room. Hillary Thornton has been at the hearing all day, which just wrapped up. She tells us what both sides had to say to city leaders in our top story at 530. It has been a long process for the disciplinary hearing today, lasting about eight hours, wrapping up for the day just within the past hour. It included hours of video evidence as Chief Rob Williams explaining his reasoning for suspending six officers without pay, one of those officers who has since resigned. The remaining five officers entered the standing room only hearing to an applause from their supporters. Discussions got underway at 9 o'clock this morning with Chief Rob Williams saying he wants his officers out on the streets when they are on duty. Something he says that is not being done while inside of dispatch or headquarters. The problem the chief says is clear in video he has reviewed multiple times. Chief Williams brought up two issues he has with this. One being that dispatchers are in there working and do not need distraction. And secondly, if they are inside dispatch, they are not patrolling, which he says plays a big role in their protection of the community. Meanwhile, attorneys for the officers say that this is all a case of retaliation. Once they elected not to switch from a 10 hour shift to a 12 hour shift, they were on the target. They were Chief Williams Crosshairs. All videos shown did come from dates prior to a December 8th department wide memo asking officers to cut back their time in dispatch. Attorneys for officers say their records do show that after that memo they did stop, but the chief does not agree. Chief Williams and his attorney then went on to outline the evidence and charges against each officer, spending about an hour on each, recommending termination for all five. The attorney for the suspended officers then going on to cross-examine Chief Williams. Following that questioning, the commission did decide to break for the day. They will resume at 8 o'clock Wednesday morning when each of the five officers are expected to testify. In Paris, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Now, after this hearing, the city commission will go into executive session to make a decision. We are learning some new information tonight about a man charged in a Jackson County murder. State police say that 38 year old Harry Henson stabbed a man to death last week. Witnesses told police the two men were friends. Today, Henson answered to the charges. Mark Barber was in the courtroom and has details. The bailiff says they don't usually have many serious criminal cases, and of the ones they do have, one is rarely a murder case. Many people here in Jackson County pride themselves on their laid back way of life, but they're watching very closely as this murder case starts to make its way through court. Harry Henson, the 38 year old accused of murder, is not from Jackson County. He's from Clay County, but on Thursday, state police say he stormed into a house on Bailey Road in Anvil and stabbed a man to death. A witness tells us Henson was upset, accusing his friend, BJ Muncie, of stealing his medication. The argument escalated when the witness says Henson pulled a knife on Muncie and stabbed him in the throat. The witness tells us that Henson then tried to attack him and Muncie's wife, but they were able to chase him off by firing up a chainsaw. Henson did not say much in court today as a not guilty plea was entered for him. In addition to murder, Henson is charged with four counts of wanton endangerment. He will be back in court next Monday. His lawyer says at that point he will consider asking the judge to reduce his $1 million bond. In Jackson County, Mark Barber. WKYT. State police say Henson was hurt when they arrested him, so he had to be taken to the hospital to be treated for his injuries. He's now in the Jackson County Detention Center. A hearing for a man whose manslaughter conviction was thrown out has been continued. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Powell County. 
Ryan Epperson was found guilty of manslaughter and two other charges more than three years ago. Since then, his conviction was thrown out and he received a new trial. Epperson is accused of driving high and causing a crash that killed Donald Tharp in November of 2011. Epperson's hearing today has been continued until March 28th. In Pulaski County, Somerset police have arrested a 20-year-old man accused of stabbing his father. Police say Cozy Ball stabbed Norris Ball on Sunday at the Beecher House Apartments on South Main Street and then took off. Norris Ball was taken to Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital with a non-life-threatening injury. Cozy Ball was found late last night near the Pulaski County Public Library. He's been charged with assault. And in Mercer County, a toddler who died last week has been laid to rest. The sheriff's office says the 22-month-old girl's grandmother found her unresponsive in a bathtub Thursday at a home on Bohan Road. According to the Alexander and Royalty Funeral Home, Madison Bozeman's funeral was this afternoon. As for the case, investigators say the results of an autopsy won't be back for a few weeks. There's a little bit of everything this week in the forecast. 60-degree weather, storms, snow. Well, let's focus on the positive, at least tonight and tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Chief, uh, Chris Bailey has an early look at the forecast. This is a wild one. Yeah, it really is. So it's kind of the calm before the storm. And we're coming off a weekend. Let's face it. It was absolutely fantastic for the most part on Saturday. Yesterday we had some rain, but at least we had the milder temperatures. Little look outside right now. We have no precipitation across the area. Fair amount of clouds, but those uh, winter weather cams that will soon switch into spring weather cams are showing uh, mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures in the normal mid and upper 40s across the entire area. 45 Jackson and Somerset. You're the cool spot. 48 Lexington. A little warmer to our north and west because those are areas that had a peak or two of sun. You notice those clouds on your Defender Radar Network. Now picking up the pace from south to north. Big storm system to our south and southeast. So mainly cloudy skies this evening. It's a nice one. Temperatures by 11 o'clock. Only into the upper 30s to low 40s. We can handle that. Storm not the one that is across Mississippi, but the one coming into Texas. That's the big daddy. That'll be on top of us as we go into Wednesday and Thursday. Heavy rain, high winds as that bad boy blows through here to be followed by accumulating snows. And coming up here in just a few minutes, guys, I'm going to show you an hour-by-hour -hour forecast that you have to see to believe. Well, you have our attention, Chris. This week is Severe Weather Awareness Week in Kentucky, and to make sure people are prepared for any weather coming our way, the governor has signed off on a statewide tornado drill for tomorrow. That drill will start at about 10.07 in the morning. The alert will be sent out over all outdoor sirens, weather alert radios, and television and radio signals. A traffic alert tonight in eastern Kentucky. The state transportation cabinet says part of a Martin County highway has been closed. Crews shut down the eastbound lane of Kentucky 40 between mile marker 0 and 1 this afternoon. They say there's a break in the pavement, which has caused it to drop. There are barricades surrounding the break so drivers can avoid it. A Facebook post of some dirty water in Martin County is going viral. Check out this video from the Mountain Citizens Facebook page from a woman's sink in the Warfield community. It's been shared hundreds of times. Officials there say they shut off water in the community last week, and they say the shutoff is causing issues with water quality. They blame the recent weather and some leaks for the problem. Crews are working on flushing the lines, which should clear up the water. An old scam is making a big comeback across the country. Con artists posing as authorities telling people they're going to be arrested for missing jury duty. But then the caller offers a payment option. Kelly Bates and her husband got a call last year from someone claiming to be with the local sheriff's department. I get a phone call that said that there was a bench warrant out for my arrest, that um, I had missed jury duty. Mark Doggett's family was targeted as well. He knew our address, our phone number. It's called the jury duty scam. Con artists say you've missed jury duty and you're going to be arrested unless you pay up. He says all you need to do is uh, send some money via PayPal. And that's when I knew, uh, you know, something's wrong. Do not believe the caller. Monique Vaca with the Federal Trade Commission says these types of scams are on the rise nationwide. In many cases, the criminals use technology called spoofing to make their number look like it comes from a local court or police department. Investigators even discovered prisoners in Georgia pulling off the scam from behind bars. But usually the con artists are hard to catch because they demand untraceable payments like PayPal, wire transfers, or prepaid debit cards. When they start demanding money from you over the phone, that's how you know this is a scam. Vaca says police departments and courts will never ask for money over the phone. 
Doggett became suspicious of the collar and hung up, but Bates forked over almost $900, and afterward, the con artist let her know she got ripped off. And then he finally said, are you, really, are you aware of what just happened? And I said, it's pretty obvious now. Authorities say if you receive one of these scam calls, the best thing to do is hang up. Now, people who have received these calls should report it to the Federal Trade Commission. Here's the number, 1-877-FTC-HELP. Again, that's 1-877-FTC-HELP. Jeb Bush drops out of the race for the White House just weeks before the Kentucky caucus. And the Supreme Court is back at work, now one justice short. Bill Bryant has the latest on the fight to fill the vacancy in the bottom line. Good evening. George H.W. Bush and his son George W. Bush won four Kentucky primaries between them. But now Jeb Bush has pulled out even before the Republican caucus on March 5th. Jeb Bush dropped out of the race after another poor showing. He finished next to last in the South Carolina primary Saturday after outspending all other candidates. Heading toward the Kentucky caucus, Donald Trump has momentum after winning South Carolina. But a week from tomorrow is Super Tuesday and second and third place finisher Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz think they will do better on that day with a lot of southern states in the mix. And Ohio Governor John Kasich is well known in heavily Republican northern Kentucky as he looks for a place to do better than expected. Kentucky's oldest city will decide tomorrow whether to expand alcohol sales. Harrodsburg already has limited sales in larger restaurants. This proposal on the ballot would loosen that restriction from a 100 seat minimum down to restaurants that seat 50 or more people. The polls will be open in Harrodsburg tomorrow from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. Last month, voters in London expanded sales to include package stores. And wet, dry elections are also set for McCrary County on March the 8th and Adair County on March 22nd. The Supreme Court resumed its work shorthanded today without the late Justice Antonin Scalia, who was buried over the weekend. Now, Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell is in the hot seat over the future of the court. McConnell has told President Obama not to nominate a replacement. The president says he will announce a potential new justice soon. McConnell, who leads the Republican majority in the Senate, indicates he will block any nominee Obama puts forth. Democrats are charging hypocrisy, pointing out that McConnell pushed for confirmations when Republicans controlled the White House. We're following up on the news that the city of Lexington plans to exercise a clause to force the Centerpoint developers to fill in the hole downtown unless something happens there in the next few weeks. For political updates, follow me on Twitter at Kentucky Newsmakers. Bill Bryant, WKYT. New tonight, the Fayette County Judge Executive is asking lawmakers to get rid of his job. Judge Executive John Roberts asked lawmakers to put a measure on a statewide ballot to abolish his job. Today, a House panel approved a bill that would put the Lexington issue on a statewide ballot. Roberts says that he has no staff and no government phone to carry out his limited duties. His office has a yearly budget of about $21,000, and a salary is less than $9,000. In most counties, the judge executive serves as CEO for county government, but the merger of Lexington and Fayette County decades ago left the Fayette County judge executive with little power.